it's, it's not possible for us to create a miracle or to make a miracle happen, right? But it is possible for us to make room for that miracle. That really, that's, that's a principle that comes out of this, this place in Scripture, um, in 1 Kings. And uh, I, want, I want to talk about that, and then, uh, then we want to move right from this into prayer. So this is going to be a really shortened, uh, uh, shortened look at Scripture. But in chapter 3, um, this is a, a time when uh, Ahab, uh, Ahab and Jezebel, everybody knows those names, Ahab and Jezebel led Israel into great sin. They, 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 uh, they sinned greatly against the Lord, and they led Israel into great sin. And Ahab and Jezebel have died now, and uh, their son, Jehoram, is now the king of Israel. Of course, Israel is, is uh, divided up into two sections at this point, and uh, ten of the tribes are, are, uh, are underneath Ahab and Jezebel, now underneath the sun, and the, he's still walking in sin, walking in great sin. And then there's, uh, then there's Judah, and uh, Judah consisted of Jerusalem, the tribe of Judah, and Levi, the Levites. And so they were still, they, or they were the longest running faithful uh, uh, Hebrew people to the Lord. And uh, so at this time in history, uh, Jehoram has become king, and uh, Jehoshaphat has been king for 12 years of Judah. And so we're going to read just a little bit, okay? Going to start at the first verse. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, became king over Israel at Samaria. In the 18th year, excuse me, 18 years, 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and he reigned 12 years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and mother, for he put away the sacred pillars of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he, he persisted in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin, he did not depart from those sins and those ways. It says, Now Misha, king of Moab, was a, a sheep breeder, and he regularly paid the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. And so, so uh, uh, here's, here's uh, Jehoram, and he's come into power, and in coming into power, one of the serfdoms underneath him that paid him tribute was rebelling, so I'm not paying you anymore. You're the son of the, of the king, and you're not going to come after me, and I can do this, and I can rebel. And uh, so Jehoram goes, no, you can't, and, uh, and uh, here's what happens. But it happened when Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jeho Jehoram went out of Samaria at, the same, at that time, and he mustered all of Israel. Then he went, and he sent to Jehoshaphat, the godly king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? And he said, I will go up. I am as you are. My people are as your people. My horses as your horses. Then he said, um, Which way shall we go? Shall we go up? And he answered, By the way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched on the roundabout route seven days, and there was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. So here's what happened is, uh, let's see, I'm looking from your perspective, and so here's Israel, and here's the Mediterranean Sea over here, and then you come down here, and there's the Dead Sea down here, and it's a big wilderness, it's a wilderness that's dry and hot, there's no water there to drink, everything that's there is salty water, it's, it's, it's unusable, but they thought if they come... They, they thought, if we come around the easy way, well, Moab's going to be looking for us. So we're going to go around the hard way that nobody would go, and then we'll have the, the element of surprise. The only problem is they hadn't prepared well, and they get out there in the wilderness, and they don't have any water, their animals are dying, and they're going, oh, God, what a mistake we've made. And here's the way it works. Okay? So they come down out of Israel, okay, and Judah. They come down. Here's, I mean, this will be the, the, the uh, Dead Sea. They come down, and they're going to come around, and Edom is here, and the king of Edom is with them, and then Moab is, Moab is right here. And so they're coming down. As they come around here, they literally are parched to death. Okay, so they're in a big world hurt because the army 
is dying, the animals are dying, and so they have a big situation here that they don't know what to do with, okay? So here, here's how it goes. And the king of Israel said, Alas, and this is the wicked king, the king of Israel, of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Talk about a fatalist. The guy's going, hey, we've come down here to die. We've all come down here to die, and we're all going to die. Okay? But Jehoshaphat, the godly king of Judah, said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Sheba, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king, uh, the king of Edom went down to him. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, what am I to do with you? You're an ungodly king who's leading the people of God into sin. What have I got to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three, three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. So he's saying, We're all going to die of you, right? Okay, so, and Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But now... Bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. It's an interesting thing. I, I have a, a background. You know Julie's background. I have a background. I, I, I come out of the Assemblies of God as well. But my mother and father um, were a part of Amy Semple McPherson's church. And uh, my, my mother grew up in that ministry. She can tell you stories of more miracles, and you can shake a stick at it. I mean, miracles, you just sit there and your face hits the ground. Really. And, uh, of course, Julie's uh, grandfather and, and her grandparents were part of the founding of the Assemblies of God. Um, but it, is, it was a common thing back in those days that during the worship times, during the times of preaching, this was true with people like Catherine Kuhlman. Um, and and during, there would, there, what there would come is there would come such a presence of the Holy Spirit that people would just be spontaneously healed. With, with their, their, they'd have new eyesight given to them. They would be able to walk again. Their, their, their legs would be made whole. Their spines would be straightened and corrected. It just, just in the middle of worship, and the word and the ministry of God that goes on in fellowships that God calls together. God said, I'm going to build a church, and in that church I'm going to do this stuff. And that's who you are. That's who we are. We're the body of Christ. And in the gathering together that we do, it's more than just being together for fellowship or being together to worship God. or being. It's, it's, it's to welcome the presence of God. To welcome the presence of God. And so Elisha... Here, here comes Elisha, and he said, um, um, Jeho um, Jehoshaphat says to him, you know, call, Je call him, and, and, uh, and uh, he comes, and he sees the ungodly king, and he said, you know what, I wouldn't even be talking to you if it weren't for Jehoshaphat here, the godly man in this area. So then he says, okay, I will, I, will, I will come before the Lord that I might hear what he has to say. And what he did was he called the musician. And they began to play, and Elisha began to worship the living God in the, in the atmosphere of worship. The atmosphere of worship. The atmosphere of worship. The atmosphere of worship. And in that atmosphere, the Lord begins to speak to Elisha. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. And he said, Thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is, the, this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. 
He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Also, you shall attack every fortified city, every choice city, and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every spring of water and ruin every good piece of land with stones. Now it happened in the morning that when the grain offering was offered, that suddenly water came by way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. So I want to read this again. I want to read it again. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played, and the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. This is what I didn't read to you a second ago. Make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord God, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that your cattle and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter with the Lord, he says. And so they went before the Lord and said, Lord, we're making inquiry of you. What do we do? And he said, make this valley full of ditches. Now, if I hold my hand up here again, here's the Dead Sea. You come around, and then there's Edom, and then there's Moab up here in Edom. And right on the border of Moab, there's a, you can still see it today in aerial photographs, there's a dry riverbed because if you take this dry riverbed and follow it back through Jordan, today's Jordan, what you do is it goes up into a, ser into a series of mountains that are back there. But it's a dry riverbed. There's never any water in it, right? And Elisha says this. He said, you go out and you dig ditches all in the valley out there. And what was going to happen is there was going to be a flash flood rain in the mountains. That's what was going to happen. And it was going to rain so hard that it was going to send water down that dry riverbed. And if it hadn't have been for the fact that they had dug ditches by God's direction, the water would have run down and run right into the Dead Sea. It would have been useless for them again. But he said, go out and dig ditches. So that when the water comes down, it'll come down that riverbed and then it'll flow out into these ditches. And you can lead your animals out there and they will have water and so will you. And you will have everything you need to refresh you. And that's exactly what happened. And then something they didn't ask for, God gave them through his prophet. And he said, and you'll have victory over the Moabites. I'll give them into your hand. So... It is in the coming before the Lord by His people and making inquiry of Him and then listening. And, and, and you know, there's, there's really sometimes not a better place in the world to listen to the voice of the living God as He begins to minister to you and you begin to minister to Him. Holy, holy, Holy is the Son of God, you are awesome, God of power, Lord of glory, you fill this place. Your name, your name, your name, you're the Son of The Spirit of God begins to tell you where to dig the ditches because He's going to cause it to rain. The Spirit of God is going to bring the fountain of God, the river of God. Remember, Jesus stood on the steps and He said, He said, Oh, everyone who thirsts. And He said, Then He said, This is going to become in you a fountain of living water. And then what does he say next? He said, and then it will become a river of living water. So this, this is the place that God says, there's water coming. Have you done what it takes to dig the ditches to do something with what I'm sending you? There's the question. There's the question. There's the question. In the daily living of our lives, let me give you a definition of, wor of worship. All these definitions I give you, they're, they're working definitions. Okay? A working definition is 
Worship is what you do with the everyday living of your life. It's not something you do when you come into church alone. It's not something when you gather together. It's not something. It's something you do in every. So when your wife says to you, honey, would you mind taking out the trash? Worship is saying, uh, get this all, get this guys. Worship is saying, yes, honey, I'd be happy to do that. It's worship unto the Lord to treat your wife well. It's worship of the living God. When you're driving down the road and some guy cuts you off, it's worship to the living God when you say, Lord, I, I pray that you'll bless that guy. He's probably having a bad day. Probably having a bad day and got up on the wrong side of the bed. His wife probably yelled at him or he yelled at her. And he is just out of it driving to work today. Lord, I pray that, that if he knows you, that you'll catch his attention. And you'll minister to him. And Lord, if he doesn't know you, I pray you'll bring him into the kingdom. You know, or, or, or any number of a thousand things that you do every day, each one of them has to do with worship. When you're walking into that grocery store and saying, Lord, show me this person. Show me the place that I'm going to give this grace gift today we talked about this morning. But worship, this worship that you saw Elisha doing, what he was doing is he was coming before the Lord to find out where to dig the ditches, what to do. How do we contain what you're going to send? He didn't even ask what, he, what God was going to send. He said, well, how do we do this? God says, to go dig ditches, I'm going to make them full of water. And that's the place. That's the place that as we, as we move in the stuff of worship in our lives, and, and we're people of worship, and God is building the tabernacle of worship in the daily living of our lives, that we are constantly digging ditches which God's going to fill with his living water. So the question is, before the Lord and before us tonight, as we move into a place of prayer, we have just a few minutes, but we, we'd like to have, if you guys want to, to have a personal prayer, we can just dismiss if anybody wants to stay behind, or if you want to have some prayer, um, I think that we should have some corporate prayer before we stop. But the, 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 the point here is, we've come tonight to begin to worship the living God, to listen to what he's saying. I don't know what he said to you as we've worshiped tonight, as we've we talked from the scriptures. But I know he was moving among you, moving among us, speaking to us and saying, I'm going to meet you over here. I'm going to meet you over here. I'm going to meet you over here. The living water's coming. We can't make a miracle happen, as I said at the beginning, but we can make room for the miracle that God's sending so that when it comes, we can make the maximum effect and we can lead the people of our lives, we can lead our, our children, we can lead our, our wives, we can lead ourselves to the water and be refreshed. Where is God saying to you, take me a ditch here, take me a ditch? Because I'm sending water. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going I'm to have Julie come up and... Uh, I, I think it, I would like for us, if we could just close our eyes, and um, if, I don't know how you do this here, so if I'm, if I'm, you know, if I'm stepping out of balance here, please forgive me for that, but is it possible that um, we could just close our eyes and, and we can just make room for that place where the Holy Spirit will begin to move your heart about praying about something? It might be about uh, family. It might be about the government. It might be about missions. It might be about um, uh, uh, the stuff that's going on in your neighborhood. It might be about work. I don't, I don't know what it's about. It might be about the martyrdom that's happening to the body of Christ around the world. But let's, let's just quiet our hearts. And then just... If you do it loud enough for us to hear, so that we can enter in and say amen. You can enter in and say amen. The Lord is listening. We want to hear too, so we can say yes, Lord. We agree with that. Let's just take, I, I, we'll take five minutes to do this, okay? Yes. Sorry. Um, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, one of our pastors in Elko, John and Priscilla Prince, their son was killed on Wednesday 
he was after he was their associate pastor. He'd been their music leader since he was 16. He's 35. He left church on Wednesday night, went to Walmart to get some groceries, and was walking to his car, and somebody hit him and killed him. And Priscilla left me a message today. They were our associate pastors in the And uh, Priscilla left me a message. He was, he was never married. He was a young man. And their hearts are broken. Their church is broken. Tell me, tell me names again. John and Priscilla Prince. John and Priscilla Elk. Prince. Rhonda, I'm going to ask you if you'll pray with us. John and Priscilla Prince. Jesus. Jesus. Precious Lord God.
is so much an unconditional regard, and we trust in you completely because they know the Lord God that without you, Lord, nothing is possible. And Lord, we Lord, we we may go through this fire, Lord, and we know, Lord, that, that you're holding our hands, Lord, in our hearts. And Father, I just pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that as a as a as a church, Lord, of believers, Lord, as well as brothers and sisters that are scattered throughout, Lord, this country, Lord, in this world, we would come together, Lord God. Stand, Lord, stand our ground, Lord, and, and, and just believe, Lord, and know, God, that you are in perfect control of everything, Lord God. And we trust you, Lord, and we know, Lord, that your hand is upon us. And Lord, we just thank you. Give us the peace, Lord, that passes all understanding, Lord. Lord, this is just a, a situation, Lord, that is, is uh, getting out of hand, but only you, Lord, can, can take care of it, Lord, and help us to, to know, Lord. And give us that confirmation through your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that, that you are with us, you are walking with us in this, Lord. And we thank you and give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you for the millions of people that are turning back to you even now, both in this country and others. But Lord, there are so many who are lukewarm who sit in Christian churches week by week, and we ask, Lord, that you would just build fire inside their souls, that they would get into the word, that they would understand who you are and that you are coming back soon. And, Lord, we also pray for Muslims, Lord, many who live in this country who don't understand their own Quran, they don't understand Allah, they don't understand anything about what they really are supposedly supposed to believe in. Lord Jesus, we have missionaries out there now like Frankie and Mary Jane Kendrick, Lord. We've got missionaries in the Live Dead program who are out there and who need our prayers and we need to cover them in prayers. And Lord, for the, for the Jews, we have missionaries out there reaching the Jewish people who need to know uh, uh, that Jesus Christ is their Messiah. We also, Lord, have so many Buddhists and Hindus. We have uh, Seventh-day Adventists. We have Mormons, Lord, who have perverted what the Bible says, and we need to pray for these every day, that it's not just the lukewarm people who check it off of their uh, to-do list every week. They go to church, they check it off, they're done. But Lord, they need to, they need to come to a full uh, understanding of who you are, the God whose eyes are blazing, the God who, who is coming back in, in, the, in Jesus, and the body of Jesus Christ, Lord, is coming back for a church that's white, that's, that whose garments are white, who is ready, Lord. And we need to pray for our fellow believers, and we need to pray for these, Lord, who have been lied to by Satan through these other ideologies. We need to pray for our missionaries, Lord, who are out on the field, yes. who are hitting yes. that. We need to be ready as we go into the market, marketplace, as we go into shopping, as we are just out in our daily walks, Lord, that if your spirit tells us that we go and we just say, how are you today? By the way, where are you going to go if you should die today? And just start up conversations with people and we would be amazed at how open people are to talk about end times because everyone senses, Lord, this is it. We are in unusual times. The weather tells us, like Psalm 19 says, that the the, the, the skies declare your glory. And all of the different weather changes, all of the different things that are going on have the average person walking around on the street scared. They are not cognizant of who you are like we are. So let us pray, Lord, that we would be willing to, be, to open our mouths and talk to others about Jesus Christ because without a revival of this entire nation and world, Lord, we are not going, this is not going to end well. We know that you're coming back because if you didn't, all flesh would perish. But Lord Jesus, until that day, let us be on fire for you. Let us be, our eyes be open to go out there and pray for those who have been lied to by Satan and, and pray for those who are lukewarm. And let us, Lord, be on our faces in your word and let us be led by your Holy Spirit. And we ask this in your name.
Ron, in the middle of this, I want to pray for Pastor Ron and Michelle and their family as they're traveling. Father, I ask you to just keep them safe. Just be their covering, Lord, over all that they do, whether they're in the car or in a hotel room or out doing the adventures that you set them on to be able to, to uh, 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 give them a rest, Lord Jesus, on vacation, that they might come back rested, Lord. Keep your watch care over them, Lord, in everything. And Lord, let there come the sweetness, Lord, of your flow in their family, Lord, that they will just recognize there's something of a, of a fresh ministry of your spirit to them, to give them a gift as they're away on this long, this prolonged period of time, Lord, and they'll come back refreshed. Bring them back safely, Lord, and give them all the understanding and wisdom that they need to see any situation that they would need to see to head anything off, Lord. Praise you for them. Praise you. Keep them, Lord. Bring them back safely. Minister to them. Feel like I just I, I don't want to quit, but I need to. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this evening, this time of, of, of the gathering of your people. Thank you for the atmosphere, Lord Jesus, of worship, the atmosphere of your word, and the power, Lord Jesus, of your word that is sharp and powerful and living, Lord. Your body is the living body of the living Christ. You are the living God, and there is no one like you. And Holy Spirit, you are the, the Spirit of the living God. And we praise you for this. We honor you. We give you our praise. We tell you we're available. Do you agree with me? I'm available to you, Lord. I'm available. Help me, Lord, to tune in to you. Help me to say, Lord, here I am. Because you're looking for this partnership. And we honor you, Lord, in the ministry that's going to go on now, Father, this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, the precious Jesus, the precious Son of God, Word of God.